Hi everyone, um, good morning for all of you who have rolled out of bed. Unless you haven't rolled out of bed and you are actually doing maths from in bed, I don't know if I approve or disapprove of that. Um, anyhow, it's great to have you with us. Um, we're going to do this lesson a little bit differently. Um, normally we will do a lot of worked examples with you, but as you as you probably worked out, like that's, that's not easy to do um, in, in this kind of environment or I should say it's, it's harder in some particular ways. Mrs. Lee's and I were talking about this yesterday um, because I'm not getting your face or your confused sounds of, huh? Like, you know, sometimes you'll comment and say, I'm confused, but often you will um, be very polite and um, quietly kind of um, suffer in silence. So what we're gonna do this lesson um, is I'm gonna go through a ba basically one worked example with you. But if you have a look on the Canvas page, um, there are more worked examples. They're just there for you to access when it's, it's appropriate to use. So we're gonna do a worked example together and then I'm going to set you loose. Um, but once you have a go at the exercises, at a particular point, you're gonna start encountering some harder questions. And to help you with them, go to Canvas, go to the um, regular class page you've got, hit online learning, and when you go to that regular page where you see all of our work there, the first thing you'll notice is, um, as of this morning, I did put up the notes that I wrote from yesterday's lesson, so you can see them there on the 6th of May row. But on the 7th of May row, you'll see that I've got some stuff there which we haven't linked. Areas between curves is what we're gonna look at shortly. Um, that link will be filled in once there is a recording, which is happening right now. The notes and the homework will also appear. But you'll notice there's something that's already been linked there, curves, with multiple crossings. So this is when um, you'll see, I'll give you an example of this in a second. This is um, more difficult and more challenging. So it's for you to have a go at. There's two worked examples in there at length. It's like a 50 minute video, okay? So what I've done is I've chosen to give you way more detail than you probably want. Um, but if you do wanna dive dig in deep into like what's going on there and how does it all work, there's, a, there's an excessive amount of detail there for you to skip through if appropriate or watch all of it if you'd like. So. Um, we're only going to have the one face-to-face -face section here, and then you're going to go for it. And um, I will, Mrs. Lee's and I will stay here during the entire allotted period of time. So if you have questions, you're welcome to come on back. Um, but after I gave you this instructional example, um, it'll be up to you to go for it. All right. So um, that's that. Let me move that to one side now and uh, get you back into the frame of things. So we're looking at compound regions and yesterday I made this comparison between um, the areas of composite figures from plane uh, geometry. So, you know, circles, rectangles, triangles, all the rest. We're doing exactly the same thing, but with that wide variety of weird and wacky shapes that we can evaluate, um, we can evaluate the area because we know integration, right? Now we're gonna have a look at a particular variety of compound region today, um, which is called an area between two curves. Uh, and you're gonna have a look at examples like this. So I've called it areas between curves, but really it's kind of a subset of compound regions. So let's have a look at this first example together. All right, you can see immediately why it's given the name that it has. Areas between two curves, I've got two curves here. I provided you with a pair of parabolas uh, and there's a shaded region in green there and that's the thing that we want to evaluate. So let me just give you a brief moment um, before we start tackling the question to sketch this. You always know that's the first and um, in some ways most crucial step. Everything else, um, you're just asking for trouble. You'll get confused. You're not sure like what does all my algebraic soup mean? You need that picture there, okay? Okay. Um, and I did say this before, but I didn't give many details. Your graph needs to be large. <laughs> it needs to be big enough that you can draw all over, all over it and scribble details and you can put in coordinates and all the rest. Um, my recommendation is about a third of a page. A third of a page is a good size for a graph which is going to have this much stuff on it. Okay. Um, another good thing is, you know, if you can, if you can cover your page, yeah, sorry, your graph with your hand and not see any of the graph anymore, it's too small, okay? So I should be able to see it. Uh, the, at, least the, at least the corner axis poking out the sides of your hand if I put it right over there, okay? Right, so hopefully that was enough stalling to get some coordinate axes there. The red parabola you can see is x squared minus 4x plus 5, and the blue parabola is minus x squared plus 6x plus 17. So how do we chart our way through this using the knowledge that we've been developing over the last week? To understand this green area, it might be helpful if we actually see it without the shading. So here's the same two graphs, okay? Um, x squared minus 4x plus 5 and minus x squared plus 6x plus 17. Oops. Let's not drop our pencil on the ground. Okay, now, 
I think I named these, right? F of X and G of X. And um, Ben, you're ahead of time and you're working out what's going on, but for the rest of you, let me show you how it is that we get this, how we actually calculate it. F of X and G of X. Um, that's our red one there, F of X. And this is our blue one, G of X, okay? Now, we've seen before, we're gonna need to work out where does the area start, that's this, the X value that corresponds to this point, and where does our area end, so that's the X value that corresponds to this point. And once we've got that though, suppose we were to integrate, I'll put it in red again, integrate, uh, let's call them from A to B, the area underneath f of x, right? Let's suppose that's what we were doing. What would the area look like that we've evaluated? Well, it's gonna be underneath that concave up parabola. So I'm going to shade it in red, let's do this. Okay, so this is the area we're gonna get, yeah? So this is not the area that we want, but it's related to the area that we want. If I integrate f of x from a to b, I'll get this red area, but if I integrate g from that same set of boundaries, I'm going to get everything underneath the blue curve all the way down to the x axis. So you can see, I'm going to need something bigger this time, um, that will be inclusive of everything that you can see fitting underneath the blue parabola. I was never very good at coloring between the lines, can you tell? There we go, so there's my blue area, right? Now, in order to get the green area that you saw above, I'm gonna use a trick that we learnt the other day, which is to subtract these two areas, right? The green area is the blue one, take away the red one. The green area is the blue one, take away the red one. Let's state that, okay? The red area is the integral of f of x, and the blue area is the integral of g of x, right? So the actual area that I want, area is going to be equal to from a to b, whatever that happens to be, we'll work that out in a second. I just want to make sure we've got our path through the question, right? Um, of the blue one, we're going to do the blue one take away the red one, right? So that's going to be g of x dx, and I'm going to subtract the, uh, the red area. Let's transition colors, so from a to b, f of x dx, okay? So you can see another way of saying it is I'm going to have the top function and I'm going to subtract the bottom function. And it is important that you know which one is which. If I, for example, did f of x take away g of x, um, I'm not going to get uh, the blue area take away the red area, I'm gonna get the red area take away the blue area. I'm noticing that the blue area is larger, clearly, than the red area, because it includes the red area. Um, you're gonna get something negative, okay? And so that's not gonna be the answer that we want. So therefore, this order really matters. It's the top, take away the bottom.